Hey you guys, good evening. Um, it is almost August, end of July. I wanted to show you my garden. Um, I've been on vacation for a little over two weeks and I came back and everything is a hot mess, including myself. Temperature I checked today reads 91 degrees, but with the humidity in uh, southern Georgia, it is 104 and the humidity is whooping my butt. So I just want to show you guys my garden so far and then probably um, I'm not sure if I am really going to do anything to it because it is so hot you come outside and you're sweating to death so there's no room to dig and do what you need to do. So basically this is the front of my garden. Um, this is the front of the house. Sorry I'm trying to get the stand to be a little bit more cooperative. Um, my roses are finally looking better after all of the um, Japanese beetle. They're about end of its life cycle, I believe. So I am grateful that it's almost over for them. So my roses and all my flowers can still bloom. You can see the hardy hibiscus are, is struggling. Um, it's got stuff feeding on its leaf and I sprayed neem oil on it. But this is basically what I came back home to. So over the course of two weeks that I was gone I couldn't treat or do anything so you can see everything is a little bit overgrown look at the weed like literally I barely had any weeds in here and look at them all look how fast they grow this is my lavender while I was gone my neighbor said that it rained a lot because she came and watched my house because we have a dog we have a husky and she came over and checked on the house pretty much every day and she said that we had so much rain right now it doesn't look it and I actually have my drip irrigation going over here as you can see here's my drip irrigation it's going right now because it's so hot I wanted to feed uh, some of the plants I have hydrangeas in the back they're doing wonderful but you can see they're drooping really badly okay so I've come to realize something and I don't know if it's just me or if anyone else in the south is experiencing it but in the south all of my um, panicle hydrangeas these are limelight so they start out beautifully and then they just automatically turn brown like they do not turn pinkish reddish do the whole color scheme that a lot of people in the colder region have so right now they are green and white and coming out and beautifying themselves but see this one right here this is about as pink as it's gonna get for me and then it's gonna go brown on me and I read somewhere where it's because it needs the cooler night temperature to change the color I don't know if it's true or not but in my case I've had a couple hydrangeas for the past couple years and they don't turn the color like I want them to I don't love it like look at how big this one is look how big it is isn't that amazing and you can see a tint of pinkish to it. But from here, it's just gonna go brown. And then it looks okay, but it's not spectacular. Here's another limelight. But um, I wanna show you a couple other ones I have. So basically, I'm just gonna concentrate on the hydrangeas because they're supposed to perform for me and they, they're lacking a little bit. And I think it's because of the area region I'm in it doesn't get cold enough at nighttime this is a vanilla strawberry or strawberry sundae but they basically are kind of the same one I think it's just a little bit hardier on the stem than other this one I train into a standard you can see so they start out you know this color cream keeps going and then they turn color and see over here you can see slight pinkish around the tinge but it goes green and then it starts to go brown and it's supposed to be this beautiful pinkish reddish color I mean I have pictures of it and I have yet to see that and I'm guessing maybe some of you who have these plants longer than I have but you can see it's changing color but not to the color that I want it to be 
and I know it's probably they said because it's too dry but literally this is on drip irrigation and we've had so much rain lately I was afraid to water it more often um, just because we have clay soil and of course with clay soil it retains water so you know even though the top soil here like here even though the top soil looks dry you can see underneath it's not really that dry see so you don't want to water the top and the bottom is still wet then you're gonna get waterlog and then your roots are gonna start rotting but see how beautiful they are and I just wish that they would change color for me into a vibrant red like I would like see over here you can see it's starting to but it never finishes it like stops midway and then it just goes brown on me but some of these head if I can get close to this one it's like as big as my head let's see if I can show you in comparison to my head look at this one can you see it <laughs> it's so big massive and beautiful so this one I'm, I'm training into a standard two and I've only gotten three so once it's done blooming I might just chop off the head let it continue to grow for next year so this is basically just my propagation bed over here um, these tall looking tree over here they are confederate rose I have yet to see a bloom but I got these two cuttings from a neighbor and I stuck it into the ground and basically look at it grow that's how nature at its best um, a couple of oh, Japanese maple over here that I'm training into tree form and growing straight from little cuttings and stuff that I got so it's doing its thing this is one of the Japanese um, beetle traps that I had you know with the bag hanging down so I just started throwing that away back here you can see my pinky winky hydrangea now this is doing better job at turning color but I don't know it doesn't wow me see look at it it doesn't wow me like the picture and maybe it's because this is really its first main year actually it might be my second main year I can't quite remember now I feel like I've been in this garden forever I still left the tag on this one you see the tag see look at that picture now that picture just wows you doesn't it but in reality this is what it looks like I'm gonna back it off a little bit so you see I mean it's still beautiful and maybe if I give it another year or so it'll perform but I don't know it just doesn't wow me and I don't know why and then over here is some more limelight we had a big big rainstorm so that's why everything's kind of drooping but everything should be dried out so they're still drooping but look at how big and beautiful this this is the limelight hydrangea so is that one but for some reason look at the difference between the two they're the same size when I first planted them and they've had pretty much the same light I mean they're literally right next to each other but you can never tell why one performs better than the other look at the big blossoms on this one versus those ones and this one's wider over here that one I think is starting to turn you can see how they go super white they start out like this color lime greenish then they turn to white and then after that seems like they kind of go back to being a little bit greenish but I'm hoping that it'll turn pink because if you look there's a, ten, a hinge of pink but you can also see that it's starting to brown on me look how big this one is can you see it and just by walking and talking to you guys I am literally like sweating to death can you see it I'm sweating to death <laughs> there is nothing pretty about gardening in end of July in southern Georgia but it is still beautiful and I'm, I'm gonna just let it keep going and doing its thing but it got so big I had a rose planted over here and it is literally suffocating my rose so I'm gonna have to get in there and dig it out 
and transplant it because this guy is just overtaking which I don't mind because it's so beautiful but again like I said I'm hoping that they'll turn that pinkish color on me but I kind of doubt it um, here is another hydrangea that I have same thing panicle I think it's just a different variety I've got so many cuttings from so many people and some plants I bought some had I know this one is different because if you can look at the flower see how small and petite they are compared to the limelight hydrangea but I don't know what kind this is so that one looks nice as well look at those big elephant ears look at this elephant ear <laughs> I'm gonna stand right next to it sorry the hill is slopey I'm gonna stand right next to it and you guys can see how big it is next to me look at one leaf isn't that amazing you can like use it as a, a blanket clothing article <laughs> I mean it's so big and luscious and green look how beautiful it is oh I did want to show you look at this so we have all kinds of pine trees in the back of our yard and we took down quite a bit but we still have more but look there's trumpet vines growing on this tree you see it yeah that's so crazy right and this is the first year I've actually seen the blooms on it. Look at it. Aren't they pretty? I like it so much that I actually try to propagate by cutting and I was not successful. But um, they're so prevalent. Look, there's one right here growing. We tried to cut it off last year and it just somehow wants to keep on thriving and surviving. Here's some more over here growing from this tree stump that we cut down and then we cut down this tree stump too see it's growing from the side of it so I just decided to put it on this trellis and train it up and see what it looks like maybe I can get a big huge like standard ball looking one and then I have some more hydrangeas over here there is one back there in that corner that's white and one here next to my apple tree and then here's a couple more up here on this path to the house so see how this one some of it starts turning pink but then look at over here it's like I don't know I don't know what's going on with it this one's definitely looks like it's moldy but see how they don't ever really fully turn into this beautiful wow factor they just kind of go brown now this one this year by far is the first one that I've ever actually seen change color I mean you can definitely tell that it's trying to change color but I don't know if it's like I said if it's not cooling enough that it's just gonna go brown see how it's pink all around here and then it's starting to go brown and I know, I know you guys might think and tell me that it's because it doesn't have enough water. But honestly, to tell you the truth, I don't think that's the case. Because we have Georgia red clay. We water them. Look, it got rained so bad, all the stuff is bent over. We had to mow the other day from two weeks of not being here. Let me tell you, there is grass everywhere. <laughs> This is another hydrangea. Definitely not a limelight because like this one also, if you look at it, see how the flower petals are so dainty compared to the hydrangea. I mean the limelight hydrangea. So it's definitely not a limelight hydrangea. I just don't know what variety it is. but So some of mine have changed color, some have not. But definitely the only one that has shown some kind of pink is this color here and it's beautiful so I mean even for all of the whiteness and turning brown I mean I still am gonna keep it around because I love it but you can see if it turns to that color 
that, you know, you hope that it would later on in the season. It would be beautiful, but most of mine just turns brown like that, and then it dries up. Oh, and let me see, there is one more. Um, oh, over here. There's two more. Do you think you guys can ever have enough limelight hydrangeas? Or any kind of hydrangeas? Probably not, huh? So here's another one over here that I trained into a standard and I planted. You can see the trunk. It's pretty short. But the trunk is under there. Yeah. The camera is on a stand, so sometimes it's a little bit hard to see. But that's the... That's the tree form I trained it into. Now this one, honestly, I think they mislabeled it because this one says it's also a limelight hydrangea, but I'm thinking of it's more of like um, little lime because it hasn't really gotten that big. And the color itself isn't like the limelight. And I think the little lime tends to be a little bit more limey in its color and it doesn't really go white and then it changes color like on here you can see where it's like a little tiny bit of pink on here but it's more lime lime green color than the actual one all the way in the back oh just doing this video and walking in this thing is like I'm sweating Here's another one here, small one that I'm training into a standard. But this one's just coming out, so isn't it beautiful? And then I have a couple more in the front. Here is this one in the very front by the street. This one is a limelight. I feel like I'm doing a lot of walking a good exercise okay so this here is a limelight hydrangea I planted it here because see it's right next to the electrical boxes I'm hoping that it'll get you know 15 10 15 feet so it kind of covers this whole area and hides the electrical boxes and just kind of this corner over here that's not very pretty I mean right now this is the first year it's in the ground so it looks really nice it's growing and it's healthy now, if it would show that color, it would be amazing. But see, you can see it on here already. They're starting to go brown on the tips on some of them. And it doesn't look like it needs water, you know. Because I know a lot of people says it's too dry, which is why it's conserving energy and not changing the color. But honestly, I don't know. What do you guys think? tell me how I can make it turn color because <laughs> even though I love this color I love the whiteness of it when it turns brown not so much and that one I usually try to water every day or every other day unless it rains then I just kind of skip a day or two over here I have the pinky winky now the pinky winky I turn it tra um, train into a standard over here and like I said, I don't know, they don't wow me, like the picture. And maybe if I give it a couple more years, it'll be okay. But at least they're turning pink. But you can also see they're browning, see right here on the tip. And this area is my mailbox. The bee balm is starting to flush again after my initial cut in end of June I think salvia bee balm hardy hibiscus look there's two that's gonna bloom for tomorrow but you can see the leaves they're being eaten I sprayed them but I don't know if it'll recover or not I think it'll be fine everybody says that whatever eats the leaf doesn't really destroy the plants but it just makes it look pretty hideous and then my roses definitely are not thriving in this Georgia Southern heat. 
So I don't know, I might have to think of replacing them with something else. I just don't know what. And then this area is just a hot mess. This is where my, um, what do you call it? The macro, um, the big mop head hydrangea. This is the area I put them in because of this huge tree that provides shades most of the day, except for evening time like now. Look, they are even turning reddish color on me. Aren't they beautiful? These are the bluish, pinkish looking ones. And depending on your pH soil, you can see they kind of change to the color. Like here's one that's almost lavenderish, magenta color. Isn't that pretty? There's all different varieties over here. Here's this one. But look at this one, like it's already drying up for me. And then this one is still coming out. Those ones are doing good. And this one is still looking good, but I don't know, they just, it's so hot, like nothing looks pretty like I would like. But I think it's just a slow process. Gardening is a slow process. It's never fast and easy unless you have the money and the fun to have it professionally done, I feel. Look at that beautiful monarch butterfly on my butterfly bush. Isn't she pretty? I have some butterfly bush over here, sedums over here. I have some more room over here. A lot of little things that I planted. So this year is gonna just be basically what they say, sleep. Sleep the first year. Leap and then I don't know, whatever the saying grow, goes with flowers, but those are my Butterfly bush, calla lilies over here doing good. They're about done and spent. My roses definitely not doing very good. Some more over here. Crepe myrtles, it's starting to get crepe myrtle season. Those are my neighbors over there. Like literally the border is right where the fence line is, but then they never continue with the fence line. So now our neighbor kind of blends in. We're having issues with them, so. I'm just going to try to grow a whole hedge of flowers so we don't have to worry about them or talk to them. But these are salvia, I believe. Look at all the bugs and insects on them. Can you guys see them? All the bees. All different varieties. All wanting food. Best hummingbird attractor. Attraction, attractor. These are Vermillionaire Kufia. I believe they are proven winners. Collection. Um, what else? It's just everything just looks spent. I gotta come in. I got a dead head. <sighs> These are coneflower. I gotta come in and dead head and remove and do what I need to do with them. But look at this variety. I think this one and this one and that one are the same. This one looks different because of the leaf structure compared to these ones. And then this one even looks different within here. And I want to get some yellow ones so hopefully I can find. But look at this one, these ones. Look how big they are. That's pretty monstrous. And then over here it's more of a fuchsia I don't know, pink, orangey. Look at that one with the bumblebee right on him. Zooming in. So, but isn't this color beautiful? Definitely like that. I love this color over here. But this eventually turns into this. So everything fades in its time. And I think that's about it, you guys. I mean, that's basically just a quick tour of my garden right now. Um, in the dog days of heat, southern Georgia. This is a butterfly bush I'm training into a standard. Can you see the tree down here? The tree form right here? And then it's kind of a small little tree, but it's doing well. This area, like I said, is my propagation bed. Here's just a regular standard. Um, butterfly bush it looks like I need to come in and deadhead and trim but 
you don't really have to on these ones but I do just because it looks cleaner um, a couple of things I keep saying a couple things and it's like the video is almost 30 minutes long I have some tree over here this one I think while I was gone I don't know why but I think the soil might be bad because if you look at it as a whole the plants looks like it is not thriving like it needs water and so I felt the soil and it felt super dry but it's weird because I water it and it goes straight out of the pot so that means the soil is probably bad because it's not retaining water so I'm gonna have to retransplant this um, this is my mayor's lemons lemon look at it it's doing great it loves its spot so it's thriving gonna let it do its thing I planted an avocado you can see my avocado tree in here it's really small but I didn't realize these verbena was gonna be so big and massive and overtake the plant so I'm gonna have to transplant them somewhere else this is a guava tree it's doing good it's sending out new leaves over here so I can't complain it's doing really good it has new shoots there's some new shoots right here this is even a new shoot from where I when I got it right here couple new shoots here and my mango tree you guys check this out look at that mango tree isn't it awesome so I thought the leaves were kind of yellowish which right now you can see it so I was like oh no it's lacking in some kind of nutrients right because most of the time if leaves change turns color it is lacking in some kind of vitamin so of course I did what everybody does. We jump on YouTube, look at all the videos, and I watched this guy who, um, you know, grows mangoes, and he said that it's just part of how the tree grow. Like it sends out new shoots and new growth, and the, this is one of its stages of color. So eventually it's gonna go green like these ones down below. So I'm gonna wait, monitor it, make sure that it actually does turn. If it gets worse, if it looks worse, then I'll address it. But it looks like it's doing fine. It looks healthy. So I'm just gonna let it do its thing. I got like two new shoots coming out. A couple more growth. Here's some more growth right here. You see it right there where my middle finger is. There we go. So new growth, so I'm not too concerned. This is my orange orange tree looks like something likes it because something is eating holes on it but it seems to be doing well and then here is my Mother's Day little raised bed that I got everything seems to be doing well in there I do have an elephant's ear over there that is massive angels trumpet over here salvia and Rio Samba it's putting out new growth I came and like literally I, I had to deadhead everything when I came back home. Look, it looks so bad. This is the last remnants of those Japanese beetle. Look, they come, they eat, they poop, and then they die. Unless you kill them, then they still die. But hopefully after this, they're going to start to perform again. Uh, this is my grapefruit tree. It's doing great. It has three new sets of leaves. Four, actually. Look, it's one, two, three, four. Can you believe it? Look at it. It is my, what is it called? Hang on. It's Bloom Sweet Grapefruit. So it's doing good. I'm training it into a standard. And then my two pomegranate trees right here. And I think I am gonna end my, I'm gonna end my video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, I do wanna show you, it is, extremely hot and two things I would definitely recommend so I hate wearing jeans and I have jeans on I've come and a ponytail so I would recommend the I'm gonna sit down. I recommend the most ponytail because in Georgia there is mosquitoes everywhere so when I am outside I use it to whip it kind of like you know a horse tail so it kind of helps keeps the mosquito at bay 
and in order not to get eaten alive, that's why I decided to wear jeans. They're the only material that's thick enough that they can't penetrate through because I've worn shorts, which they'll eat you alive if you wear shorts. And I wear those like stretch pants. You know what I'm talking about, ladies. Those stretch pants that, you know, they're like basically your second skin. I wear those and I still get eaten alive, basically. So the only thing I found really work is if you wear jeans. And for the most part, I have fitted jeans, more of like going out kind of jeans, but I sacrificed this pair to be my gardening pair. Anyways, I think that is it. I am hot and sweaty. I'm gonna go in and shower. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a great day. Happy gardening. And I would say, <sighs> stay indoor. Drink lots of water if you have to be outside keep hydrated because look I think I sweat out all my water that I drank today. Talk to you guys later. Bye.